come quite far now in this journey of discovering our identity as artists for God's kingdom. And each time we do so by looking at first, who is God? Who, what are his qualities of his nature, of his artistic nature? And what we're going to look at now is that God is expressive. What we mean is that God loves to communicate with us what it is that is in his heart. We've already looked at how God is very emotional. We've looked at how these emotions are, are shared, or they are expressed, they are seen in his creation. So God expresses these emotions quickly, dramatically, but also creatively. The Bible is full of stories and poems about God expressing delight and pleasure, anger and jealousy in creative ways. He expresses his delight over his creation through speaking poetry with Job. He expresses his grief over creating humans by sending a dramatic flood. His anger over evil is expressed by sending fire and brimstone. And even he uses a pillar of salt. At another point, it is ten plagues. There's even a story of the earth opening up and swallowing some people who have rebelled against him. And then God expresses his love for Israel through so many poems and artistic performances through his prophets. And there's even the beautiful one through the Song of Solomon. See, God is always expressing his heart and desires to us. He makes himself and his plan known. He makes it known in creation. He makes it known in our own humanity. He makes it known in scripture. And especially, he expresses it, makes it known through Jesus. God wants so bad for us to know his heart, to know about him and his kingdom, who he is, what he has for us, is that he communicates creatively to every person and every group of people in a style that fits each audience. God calls out to Adam and Eve in the garden. Then he walks with Enoch. He instructs Noah, converses face to face with Abraham. With Jacob, he wrestles. With Moses, he appears in a burning bush. And then he appears with him face to face. When Saul sins before God, God rebukes him directly. When David sins before God and responds with humility, God gives him metaphors. On Mount Sinai, God displays his power to Moses, we've already shown this, but to Elijah on that same mountain, he whispers, because that's what Elijah needed at that moment. The prophets speak in such a variety of messages, analogies, stories, these wild performances of art, and through dreams and visions, God speaks. Jesus' tenderness to the needy and the sinful is shown in his words and his care and his healing, and yet he harshly rebukes the corrupt religious leaders, but Nicodemus, he visits him in secret. Jesus uses parables sometimes, and sometimes he explains them, and sometimes he doesn't. See, we need to understand that God loves to express himself to everyone. So that is why when we come to other people, we can trust that God has already been expressing himself to them, whether they have heard it or not, whether they have understood it or not. 
So sometimes if we come to someone who is different than us and we try to do so in how God has spoken to us and not take the time to find out how he has been expressing himself to them, we may not be able to clearly be able to share about the kingdom with them. And so we take that time, knowing that God has expressed himself to them, to find out how, to find out what beautiful way has God already been speaking to this group of people? What already is in their culture? What already is in their songs that comes from Him? What already in their creation, the environment that they live, that they live in, expresses God's heart to them? Because that's who God is. He's trying to share Himself, show Himself, to everyone in this entire world because he is a God who is expressive.